Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and for another installment in Questions and Coffee with David. This is where I get up bright and early in the morning and before I start my day, the very first thing I do is start answering your questions uh, that have come in over the last couple of days to try to help you with all your home studio, recording, mixing and mastering and gear questions so you can have less of a frustrating time and make better music in your home studio. So before we get to this week's set of questions, if you could do me a big favor, please hit that subscribe button if you like what you see in this video and please share this with others it helps me out tremendously also go to facebook.com slash home recording made easy and follow me there as well as twitter and for more tips tricks concepts and training around all aspects of home recording mixing and mastering be sure to head out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and take a look at the quick mix series along with the made easy series training products they will absolutely help you make better music mixes and productions in your home studio i promise so now let's head on over to question number one Okay, first question this week comes in from Dave, and Dave writes in, I'm working through your recording and mixing series. They're very helpful. For whatever reason, I remain a bit confused about mic slash instrument inputs on the audio box 1818. The first two are mic slash instrument. The others are mic slash line inputs. I am simply trying to record an acoustic guitar, mandolin, and banjo. It works fine with microphones, but when I plug directly in, uh, indirectly, I can't replicate the sound of the instruments. It seems to work okay with the mic slash instrument input, but without having the fullness of using a microphone. I think I need to learn more about plugins. Perhaps this is included in one of your sessions. Thank you for your time. Dave. Well, thanks, Dave, for writing, and I appreciate your question. And no, you don't need to learn more about plugins. Or I guess the answer is yes, you should always uh, learn more about plugins, but not for this particular problem. Um, so your problem is uh, when you plug in, for example, your acoustic guitar with a guitar cable into your interface, it doesn't sound as good as when you just mic it up with a regular microphone. And that is absolutely gonna be the case nine out of 10 times. Most acoustic instruments and acoustic guitars in particular, especially if it's an affordable or a mid-price range guitar, is not gonna have a very good pickup system or an electronic system in it. Those are usually made for like when you're playing live to, to, uh, to be able to just plug into a PA so you don't have to have microphones on stage. The best way to record an acoustic guitar more times and not is to do exactly what you just alluded to, which is use a microphone. Now, how do you uh, mic up an acoustic guitar uh, uh, properly to get a good sound? Well, there's lots of videos out there on YouTube and a couple on my channel as well that can help you. I'll give you a couple of guidelines here. First and foremost, you want to try to use a large diaphragm condenser microphone if, if at all possible. It doesn't need to be an expensive one. It could be a $99 microphone. Um, when you put the microphone on the microphone stand and put it in front of the acoustic uh, guitar itself, you want to be about 12 to about 24 inches away from the guitar. You don't want to be too close uh, because you want the instrument to breathe. Um, you want to uh, point the, uh, the, uh, the microphone uh, between the sound hole and let's say the 12th to 15th fret. And if you turn the microphone more towards the sound hole, you're going to get a more warm, a more boomy sound. It could be even kind of muddy sounding which may not be desirable if you point it too much towards the neck it's going to thin out a little bit and you're going to lose a lot of body and warmth so you want to try to find that happy medium now every acoustic guitar is a little different and you want to experiment do some recording samples and listen back and find out what sounds good to you that is going to uh is really the only way to really do it again you can plug in and you can do what you suggested but you're right, it's not gonna sound nearly as good. So just get yourself a large diaphragm condenser microphone, um, and again, experiment with the position. Again, keep in mind, don't bring the microphone too close to the guitar because that's gonna give it too much of a boomy sound. You want the guitar to breathe a little. You wanna set it back a little bit. Um, and if you're recording, in a, depending on the acoustic treatment in your room, will also have a will play a large factor in the way that guitar kind of sounds. Uh, so you wanna do some experimentation. So I hope that helps again the plugins are not your issue here the plug-in the the it's the microphone is is really what you want to do if you have any other questions or you need some more help feel free dave to write in again and i'll try to help you okay thanks for writing in and now let's head on to question number two Okay, the next question came in on YouTube, and I don't have the person's name here, and I have to apologize. So hopefully the person's watching this video and they'll they'll recognize their question, but the question reads as such. Uh, hey Dave, I'm going through the Mixing Made Easy Volume 2. On the tape emulation part, you use a tape plugin I've never seen before. I have the Slate Digital VTM. If the input and output are linked, I don't need to adjust them individually like you do in the video. Is that correct? I should It should be automatic. 
And in regards to EQ filtering, using the PreSonus stock EQ is 48 dB cut too much. Should I stick to more around 24 dB? Do the cut slopes pertain to a certain instrument is what I'm asking. Then, uh, thanks again for all the great videos. My mixes have shown major improvement in the last six months. Well, that's great. Again, I apologize I don't have your name here. I'm glad you bought the series and I'm glad it's helping you. And if your mixes are getting better, you are right on track. And that is uh, exactly why I created those videos. So I thank you so much for your support. So you have a two part question here. Um, the first part of your question is in mixing Made Easy Volume 2, I believe I used the Universal Audio um, Studer um, tape machine, if I remember right. You're using the Slate Digital virtual tape machine which I also own and they're both great products the answer to your question is yes if on the VTM the slate digital virtual tape machine the link button is enabled then when you turn up or down your input your output will also turn up or down by the same amount if you unlink them you control them individually typically I keep it linked and if I need to push the input it'll automatically turn down the output that's what you want to do but you don't have to but you're absolutely correct in what you're saying have no fear with the tape machine you're on the right track as far as the EQ slopes for like high pass filtering um, regardless of the EQ that you use is 48 dB too much um, well there's really no rules I typically will 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 stay somewhere between uh, 6 and 12 dB of a slope more times than not I like more gentle roll-offs more gentle curves they tend to sound more natural now there are times where maybe I want to really just cut it off and have like a 24 or 48 dB slope which will give you more kind of a cliff kind of a shape um, there's nothing wrong with that but there's no right or wrong answer I would say start with 12 dB and, and have it be gentle and if you find that you're not happy with the sound you can always make a steeper slope um, so but there's no uh, you know slope preset if you will by instrument it, it really all depends um, and again I would I would lean towards more gentle slopes than more steep slopes for high pass filters so again sorry I don't have your name here but thank you for writing in I hope that answers your question um, please write in again um, and let me know if you have any other questions and I'll be certainly be glad to help you okay thanks for writing in and now let's get on to the last question in this video question number three Okay, question number three, and the last question comes from Tom, and he has kind of a file saving kind of a question in Studio One, and I get this question all the time. It's a little lengthy, but I'm going to read it. I'm sure other people watching this video have had the same issue, and I'm here to help. So here's the question. Um, as I mentioned on your YouTube video, I just came into possession with a Windows PC, and I figured since my MacBook will not run Studio One 3, I'd use the PC on the fly. I'm not really sure why your MacBook doesn't use Run Studio One 3. It should, unless I'm misreading this or I'm misunderstanding. But in any event, you have a PC that's cool. Um, he says, I exported, uh, I exported some stems from my Studio One on my Mac and imported them onto the Studio One on my new PC. Everything worked fine and I saved the file when I was done. The problem is if I delete the stems from my desktop, Studio One no longer finds them when I try to open the song again. I would think that all the necessary files would have been saved in Studio One directory and the stems would no longer be needed, but for some reason they are. Here are the steps that Tom took here. Step one is he exported the stems on, on his Mac and placed them into a Dropbox. Step two was he removed them from the Dropbox and put them on his PC. Step three was he imported the files into Studio One. Step four, he saved the song and he also tries, tried the save as function. And then lastly, step five, he deleted the stems on the desktop. So he imported the files and he figured he didn't need the stems anymore and he deleted them. Studio One could not find the files when I opened the song, but did once I removed them from the trash. When I exported both WAVE and, and FLAC files, but got the same results with both. Any suggestions? Am I doing something wrong besides getting involved with a Windows PC? No, you're not. This is a common thing that happens. It has nothing to do with Windows and Mac. Now, I'm going to put an image up above my shoulder here in a second. This is going to help tie together. This is a real simple fix. Now, in Studio One, there is in the Preferences uh, window, and again, I'll put the image up because I don't know where it is off the top of my head. There is a box that you need to check off. It, it is uh, dis it's unchecked as the default, and that checkbox says something to the effect of, uh, let me open up the image and I'll read it to you. It says, uh, 
copy, ask to copy external files when saving the song. And you'll see the image above my scene, above my shoulder. You need to check that box. What that tells Studio One to do is when you import your stem files, and you, if you don't have that box checked, what's gonna happen is exactly what's happening to you. It does not copy those stems to the directory where Studio One is gonna look for those files the next time you try to open it, open up the song. Make sense? What it's gonna do, it's gonna look to wherever the stem files originated from, in your case on the desktop. When you enable that checkbox, then what happens is, when you uh, when you go to save the song, you're going to get a dialog box, box that's going to ask you, do you want to copy these files to the working directory? You're going to say yes. It's going to take a few minutes. It's going to copy them all. And then that will allow you to take the ones that you had on your desktop and throw them in the trash. And the next time you open up Studio One, it's not looking to the desktop anymore because it copied those files to the directory, the media folder in the Studio One directory. And that's what you want to have uh, do. Now, that is a, that is a, a check box that is defaulted unchecked so when you set up your session on your pc you need to go in and you need to check it and you only need to do it one time you don't need to do it for every song it's a global setting so i hope that answers your question that happens to a lot of people i've gotten this question a bunch of times so now i'm answering it in this video and the next time someone writes me an email i'm going to refer them to this video so i hope that answers your questions let me know how you make out if you have any other questions i'd be glad to help just write in so thanks again for watching Questions and Coffee with David, if you want one of your questions answered in an upcoming episode, please send it to info at homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I will feature it in an upcoming video of Questions and Coffee with David. And until the next video, I've been David with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Please hit that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.